Hi, today we're going to do a review. We're going to do a review of a battery grip. Um, this was Polaroid battery grip, cost £71, pounds, um, or the equivalent in dollars, or euro, or whatever, but I found it very cheap. It was the cheapest one I found that sounded to be viable. It's got a time lapse on it, which is great. That's actually why I bought it. It's got a remote control. So let's get on and see what we think about it. Right, well, strange as it may seem, we have the battery grip. We've got a nice little battery holder. Now, this one will hold two normal um, batteries for the camera. And this is a nice little backup where it'll just take normal AA batteries. Instruction book, remote control, and a spare battery for the LED uh, in, the, uh, in the grip. Now putting the battery pack slider or taking it out is very easy, it just fits in the end so like this. Press the little blue button and out it slides, very simple. And the LCD battery is found here, um, just inside, and you need um, I just have a pair of tweezers just to pull it out. Now on this side we've got the LCD um, that is a clock <laughs> and I've tried to set it, well I haven't tried but I know what I'm like in setting clocks, uh, we'll have to see how that goes and all the other selections for the intervalometer which from now on will be called time lapse, intervalometer sounds like something from the 1930s. Now there's a little thing we have to do to the 7D before we put the battery pack on and that's open up. Uh, there and there you'll see a very small little switch now we just move that switch to the right and it allows us to take off the battery pack cover now Polaroid have been very good because what they've done is they've given us a little place to put the battery pack cover in there so that's ideal so now the next step is just to put the two together um, and that's very simple and we do that without the battery pack in and we just turn that to screw it in. Now it's attached, all we've got to do is put the battery pack on. Now I've put the two batteries in and they go in opposite directions. You see the two arrows. Um, let's put the battery pack in and that'll just go in nicely like that. So let's have a look at buttons. Um, up, when you're using an upright mode shutter release button, it's got a button there, the MFN button for changing aperture, shutter speed. Now those all can be turned off, and both can be turned off by just turning that to on or off. Um, that's to stop it being accidentally fired. Now on the other side, on the back side, we've got uh, the magnification button, um, sorry, magnification button and the demagnification button, the AF on, and all the buttons to set the clock which you have to set with your little finger because if not with one of my big fingers I'd push all of them at the same time but um, it's all very get atable and very very good really I'm quite impressed the other thing that's interesting and my camera's a bit dirty is the the finish on it matches very well the finish on the on the camera so the whole thing looks very professional and very smart well, I find it was very easy to set the clock, so that was no problem. Now, what about the time lapse? Setting the uh, time lapse, time lapse uh, was very, very difficult, mainly because the instructions are very badly written. Um, what you have to bear in mind if you're going to set it is the delay. You have to set the hours, the minutes, and the seconds, and the long, exactly the same thing: hours, minutes, and seconds and the interval, hours, minutes and seconds, and then the number of images you want to shoot. Now, whereas in the book, it gives you the impression that the delay is that number, the long is that number, and the interval is that number. So it becomes a little bit complicated, but once you realize you have to set all three, it's very simple. If you can hear frogs in the background, uh, they're coming from my pond. Now, I've got the time lapse set up for a delay of 12 seconds, and this is how it works, you just switch it on and it will start counting down. And after the 12 seconds it will fire the first of 385 shots. 
There it goes, that's one. And then every three seconds from then after, and you can see it counting down in here, how many shots are left. Well, I won't bore you with 381 shots, um, so we'll stop that there. Now, it comes with a um, remote control, which works up to about 30 feet, but it has to be in visual contact with the electric eye that's there, the little receiver, so right there. Um, now, as it's on the front, you have to be at a 45 degree frontal view of the camera to make it fire. I'd much prefer to have it on the back because I tend to stand at the back of the camera when I fire it. So one important thing with it is that it's limited on the time lapse to 40 seconds of video. And that's because you can only do a thousand images or 999 to be exact um, but 40 seconds is great for any clip I would have thought with time lapse get bored if not um, the great thing is using it with upright it does in fact help stabilize the camera no doubt about it and you've got the release button there which is a great advantage it adds 300 grams to the weight of the camera but it does get a bit heavy if you hold it at arm's length for more than about five seconds. Well, what's my decision? Very good, good build quality, works exactly as it's supposed to, a little difficulty understanding the instruction book, but once you've done it once, uh, it's fine. Uh, the only problem, really, is the remote control. You've got to be in front of the camera. I like sitting in a chair, drinking a gin and tonic and going, boom, much, much nicer. <laughs> Bye.